Good morning, Chicago, and welcome to Echoing God's Word, the radio program sponsored by the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. I'm Amanda Thompson. And I am Christian Rocha. And we are your hosts for a very special program focusing on grace and the Holy Spirit throughout Scripture, and also a retreat model for confirmation students called Spirit Day. We are blessed to have Patricia Malinowski, the Vicariate 5 Catechetical Ministry Coordinator and the Coordinator for the Chicago Catholic Scripture School with us today. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you, Amanda. And could you tell us a little bit more about your background? Yes, Amanda. I'm a former DRE from Indiana, seven and a half years, went through the Lay Ecclesial Ministry Program, and have been blessed with a ministry in catechesis and in chaplaincy. I'm also a part-time chaplain at the University of Chicago. Great. Thank you. And we are also blessed to have Terry Navarro here, the Director of Religious Education and a Pastoral Associate for St. Mary Star Star of the Sea with us as well. Welcome, Terry. Thank you, Amanda. And could you give us a little bit about your background? Yes, I've been employed at St. Mary Star of the Sea Parish for over 26 years. 17 years I taught in the school and then returned to full-time ministry as the Pastoral Associate and the Director for Religious Education. Great. Thank you. I'm welcome. So let's begin our program with Patricia. Um, Patricia, can you tell us a little bit about the workings of the Holy Spirit throughout Scripture? Yes. Throughout Scripture, we find the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that gives us the Word, which is Jesus Christ. This is done out of love so that we may enter into a fullness of life. As in Genesis and in the prologue to John, we find in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He is in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him. And so therefore we are asked also to come into relationship with God through Scripture. Scripture gives us the grace beyond measure. It is the connectedness between Scripture and grace that infuses grace into our lives. Our catechism tells us that grace is a participation in the life of God. We are all called to come together, to live this oneness in holiness and in love. Grace is a gift. We cannot pick up Scripture and turn to any page without finding the infusion of grace and light and the Holy Spirit and love. The love of God is calling us. If we're able to, if we could pick up Scripture daily, that would be great. Scripture is all around us and in us in our lives. We speak so many words that come from Scripture and the Bible themselves. It is the breath of God. It is the breath of the Holy Spirit wanting to enlighten us and to form us, to form us into a holy people of God, to help us to know and love God. We must seek the Lord. We must actively pick up Scripture Read it, share it, meditate it, and ask the Lord to place scripture into our mi- minds, into our hearts, and into our souls. Because it in, in this way, God has come to us, come to us as his people to call us. Now, there's certain reasons why we don't pick up scripture, and some is just because of uncertainty, some is because not familiarity, some is because of time. Sometimes we just don't have the time. But the Lord asks us to make up the time, and if we ask the Lord, he will open up the doors for us. The Archdiocese of Chicago does offer the Chicago Scripture School, which is a fabulous way to learn about Scripture and to be infused with the grace and the love of God and Scripture itself. It is a four-year certificate program where individuals can get advanced biblical studies certificate or a two-year certificate. And we will be opening up two new sessions, um, two new classes starting in the fall. So we ask you to please consider that and to know that this is one of our best kept secrets, that there actually is a scripture school, Mm -hmm. but we want that to be a common name. We want that to be like the other brand names that we see in our household. Where are the classes held, Patricia? They're held at various locations. Right now we have five sites. We have three in this area. Um, One is at St. Julie Billiard uh, down in Tinley Park. The other is at um, St. Teresa of Avila, which is just north of the city. And then we have two up north. Uh, We have one in Libertyville at St. Joseph, and we have one at St. Anne at... um, in Barrington, 
and the other one is at St. Philip Neuri. Now three of those five will be um, graduating, so congratulations to our graduates, and the other two up north will be in their fourth year. We will also be opening up two new sites. So it's very important that we do get feedback from those that are interested as to where to plan these sites over the next three years. We're planning to have one at the Myers Center for sure, which would be offered on Saturdays. We're trying to now open up alternatives. And then we're also looking into one in Vicariate 5. So that will be finalized in the next few days, the next week or so, and we'll be promoting it. So how much of the Bible do you cover throughout the Scripture School? Is it the entire Bible? Is it certain parts of the Bible? How does it work? Actually, we do cover the entire Bible. So if a person was to commit to the four years, they would complete that. If they, of course, just do the two years, they will cover portions of the Old Testament and portions of the New Testament. But it is very comprehensive. It is complete. There is homework. Um, students are asked to do, and then there is summer reading material uh, that students do a review a book. Now, the book that um, Jesus of Nazareth by our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, will be the book that the students will be asked to review for the summer session. So do they meet in the summer session, or do they read outside of class? They read outside of class, okay. yes. Um, this year we're also having an alumni breakfast the end of June. This will be the first time that we'll be having that. And that is for us to reach out to the alumni who are filled with the knowledge, the wisdom, and the grace of the Holy Spirit because they have dedicated their lives, these last four years of their life, to studying the Word of God and to inviting God into their lives. And so many times as graduates, as we know, when we've graduated either from high school or college or university or scripture school, we're not sure what the next step is. And God says, people into our lives to help us with that. So there is myself and others that will be helping to help them bridge this gap so they can be the disciples and go forth into the parishes and do the work of the Lord to bring that word forward. Because right now we believe there's many that are sitting with a lot of knowledge and don't aren't quite sure which direction to go. So we'll lend a helping hand and guide them along, which is very important. Um, we always are on the journey. We talk about grace in Scripture. The grace in Scripture comes to life within us, and through God's grace and plans, it proceeds through our journey of a lifetime. And will it have turns? You turn sometimes. Will it have ups and downs? Yes, it will. But God will always send those to guide and to help. And so henceforth, we're here. Excellent. And one more question about the school. Do they the classes meet in the evenings, on Saturdays? What What is a typical class schedule? The classes right now are meeting on the evenings. They're either meeting on Tuesday or Thursday evening, which we will continue that for next year. The, the two up north will continue on their Thursday meeting class. We'll have hopefully a class meeting on Tuesday, which we'll finalize soon. And then we hope to open up, or actually we will. It's beyond a hope. By the grace of God, it is actually going to take place. We will have a class meeting at the Meyer Center, which is on Lake Park Avenue here in the city, the Pastoral Center. Very nice. Very convenient. There's lots of places to go throughout the city, which is nice, too. Yes, and the Meyer Center, once again, will meet on Saturdays. Wonderful. And I think you can find out more information, of course, on our website www.catechesis-chicago.org. Um, but we're going to have to take a break now. <clears throat> but thank you, Patricia, for that. That was lovely. And we hope people are inspired to check out the, sh the Scripture School. Thank you for joining us this morning. You are listening to Echoing God's Word. And today we're talking with Patricia Malinowski, the coordinator of the Chicago Catholic Str Scripture School about grace and the Holy Spirit throughout Scripture. Please continue, Patricia. We know that God reveals himself through us and to us through Scripture. We talked about discipleship through the Chicago Scripture School, and that would be an example of how we go forth, revealing the scriptures, being the disciples, being the ones that are sent, 
And our catechism tells us that God desires all men and women to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So it is through this transmission of the divine revelation that we truly come to know the love of our God, to know who God is. Who is God? Scriptures help us to answer this question. And as we go along, we help each other also. God is always with us in various ways. As Catholics, the Eucharist, the Mass, and the Word are two of the most important ways that we live our faith and that we live our life in Christ. We cannot survive without the love of our Lord, and God has given us himself tangible through the scriptures, inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the grace of God, imbued the breath of God. We know the Ruah, the the Spirit of God, is what God put into each one of us. We read that in creation, how we are the likeness of God. We know that, and also the breath. So we go forth inspired. Um, We know that God is the author of sacred scripture, and he wrote um, through the authors, inspiring them, um, enlightening them, and we are also enlightened. We also know that uh, Christ revealed himself to us. God revealed himself through it, through the scriptures to us, and that we are called to take this very seriously. This is a part of our faith, to know God. To know someone means to spend time with them in relationship. And so we are asked to come together to study the word, to know the word, embrace the word, be it in class, be it at mass, be it at home with your children, raising them with knowing the word of God, embracing it through Lexio Divina, loving God. Let us love God through the scriptures because he wants to love us so that was very beautiful and in fact you know as you were speaking i kind of even um came to a little bit of a realization myself especially when you were talking about how um the breath of god is in is in the scriptures of course it's his full it's it's, it's his revelation and that's the same breath that he breathed into us so it's almost like when you're reading the scriptures prayerfully there should be like a resonation there like right something is resonating in there um it calls to us as is part of ourselves and we probably don't even can't even understand ourselves properly unless we you know encounter god well thank you uh patricia Thank let's you, Kristen. <laughs> let's talk let's talk to terry about some more practical ways of trying to trying to get um uh, teens involved. Uh, is it youth, teens, spirit? Actually, why don't I have you explain it better? Okay, thank you, Christian. Sure. Um, we host an event at the parish called the Spirit Day Retreat. Mm-hmm. And the Spirit Day Retreat is a retreat for confirmation candidates, for those okay. students that are preparing to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. So depending on what um, age level the students in your parish are, it's for all confirmation candidates. It is a prayerful day. It's a fun day. It's a day where the young people can actually experience what it's like to have the Holy Spirit present in your life and how that Spirit can guide you and direct you. Um, It's similar to other confirmation retreats that people may host in their parish in that you gather all the confirmation candidates together. Uh, This usually takes place before the reception of the sacrament. There's prayer involved always. Uh, Someone usually gives a talk to the students about the importance of confirmation and how this should strengthen them to live their lives. Candidates should verbally support their, um, commit their support to their parish community, and catechetical leaders, for the most part, invite someone to come and lead a retreat. Now, Spirit Day is a little bit different in some aspects as well because the students take a more active role in the actual retreat themselves. We also invite other young people who are a little bit older than those being confirmed and have already been confirmed themselves to be witnesses of the Spirit's movement within them and their commitment to their parish. It's witnessing 
and it involves a great deal of organization and work on the part of the catechetical leaders, but it is very much worth it when you see the outcome of it, when the young people can actually become involved and engaged in this retreat experience. We have live music present throughout the retreat. There is also a DJ that plays music throughout, and it's not all spiritual music. There's a lot of um, popular music as well that the young people will recognize. The students are involved in skits. They're given time to think about things. They're given situations and then asked to come up with solutions or ideas, how this would impact their lives, what type of opportunity this might provide for them in their lives, and how the Holy Spirit is going to help um, guide them through all these situations in their lives. One of the other wonderful things about Spirit Day is that it uh, necessitates the involvement of more people from the parish in the retreat itself. We're going to call upon other young people to come and be floor runners that will come and just help out. We will have people that give witness talks, and these are usually young people themselves who have seen and experienced the Spirit of Christ, living, moving, working with them, then how they have experienced this love of God in their lives and what kind of change and commitment it has caused them to um, undertake in their own lives. Students um, are often asked to write a letter um, to Christ and say how the experience of Spirit Day has moved them or changed them. What has it caused them to think about? And the most important outcome that we hope to obtain through Spirit Day is that these young people moving from confirmation will move to a deeper commitment to their faith in their own parish. We offer them the opportunity to sign up or experience ministries within their own parish, something that they can actually do, a way they can be connected to their parish, connected to God. And I also find one of the most rewarding aspects of Spirit Day is that it's not just for one individual parish. It's done with groups of parishes together, depending on the number of students and the amount of space you have. But it's a wonderful example of working together in the larger church. And the catechetical leaders have to work together in the planning process and taking responsibility for this. And I think that's a wonderful role model for our young people to see people working together within the greater church. Yes, I agree. It is a fantastic retreat that's been going on for a couple of years with huge success. So we need to take a short break, but we'll be back to learn more about the Confirmation Retreat Spirit Day. We are back with Terry Navarro, who's talking about the Confirmation Retreat Spirit Day. Terry was talking about how um, this particular retreat really embodies the Holy Spirit and allows the students to to feel the presence of the Spirit throughout that day and and beyond. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a a bit more? Well, we hope that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the faith and the witness of the parish community, the goal of the retreat is to provide an opportunity for our confirmandi to live an inner spiritual awakening, an experience of the Spirit within them, and to help them to commit to Christ and his church, most directly doing this through their own parish involvement. So we will generally have um, people who represent different ministries within the parish come and give a brief explanation of what it means to be a minister of hospitality or extraordinary minister of communion at mass or hospitality minister or someone on your prayer network that prays for the homebound. And they give a brief explanation. And then the young people um, have the time to go and talk to these ministers and find out a little bit more what is involved in it and see if that's something that they might be interested in committing to as um, a confirmed Catholic. Right. So it's not that confirmation is about graduation, but Ex- confirmation is a movement into the life of the parish. Exactly. And you're inviting these these um, students to come forth and, and volunteer and be a part of the parish life. Exactly. And the youth minister of the parish provides a great lead role in this uh, Spirit Day retreat as well, because as they are perhaps graduating from eighth grade or moving on from their parish school, the youth ministry program in the parish can provide a place for the students to come back and feel connected and have that connection within their parish. 
we also hope that the goals or the objectives of the retreat is to know the Spirit of Christ among us, to experience the Spirit of Christ among us, and to awaken the Spirit of Christ within us. And all of this comes through the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and we pray that this experience is a wonderful and Spirit-filled place for our young people to be. Yeah, you know, it almost feels like a mini Kairos, I think, too, where you have that that deep mm-hmm. um, experience. Very with... condensed, but yes. 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 And, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Also, I was thinking about um, the students relating to, to, to other people their age, too. Mm-hmm. Having that is so key. They listen to kids who are a little bit older than them a lot more than they listen to the adults and that's the beauty of this retreat too and very positive role models for them yes yes excellent thank you you're welcome so i was going to mention that if you want more information about spirit day um you should contact uh jesus de leon chui de leon at the office for catechesis and youth ministry and you can Find that uh, find his information on our website www.catechesis-chicago.org. Then you can click on youth ministry, and I have a few other reminders as well. Um, I mentioned this last time. The Chicago Catechetical Conference will be held on November third and fifth. Uh, that is a Saturday and a Monday, which is different from last year, which was a a Friday and a Saturday, so please be aware of that change. It's the 3rd and the 5th only, not the 4th. And it's going to be at Drury Lane again, which was a great time last time, so hopefully everyone will enjoy themselves again this year. And for those listening specifically, since it's coming right up, is the um, Catechetical Ministries Awards Banquet, uh, and that's next Tuesday, May 22nd, at Drury Lane. Um, just a reminder for anyone who happens to be listening. Um, and finally, uh, the graduation and certification ceremony is going to be on Tuesday, June 19th at St. Julie Billiard. And um, once again, we congratulate the those graduating from the Chicago Catholic Scripture School at that event. Um, actually, Patricia, if you wouldn't mind giving everyone um, your phone number so that they know um, how to contact you in case they are interested in the, sh- the Scripture School. Thank you, Christian and Amanda. Yes, once again, my name is Patricia Malinowski for the Chicago Catholic Scripture School. I can be reached at 312-534-8053. And also information is on the website. Definitely, and we're working on improving it. And as a matter of fact, we're recording a video so you can see Patricia in another little short segment there. Um, wonderful changes coming up. Check our website, www.catechesis-chicago.org. And we want to thank Patricia and Terry for being with us today and sharing their wisdom with us. Please join us next month when we talk about the second year strategic pastoral plan of the Archdiocese, which will be the year of the Sunday Mass. Thanks for joining us, and on behalf of the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry, God bless.